In this video, I'm going to show you how to sketch the various cost curves, and we'll talk about how we see the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns in most of those. The first step will be explaining how marginal cost affects average variable cost, ABC, and then affects average total cost. Then what we'll look at is how average total cost is also affected by AFC. So when you look at the overall shape of ATC, it's important to see that it's being affected by this and then by ABC as well, which is being affected by MC. It's our conclusions about average total costs that are our most important. First, let's look at marginal costs. Remember, the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns says that in the short run, costs will first fall because of improvements to specialization, etc., but eventually, after hitting the point of diminishing marginal returns, they rise. So we simply draw this kind of like a Nike swoosh, down and then up, and that's what MC looks like. We can see the point of diminishing marginal returns there at the lowest point. And remember that these are a per unit cost, so it's saying that as I produce one, two, three, as I increase output by one, per unit costs go down and then up after the point of diminishing marginal returns. Next, let's look at average variable cost. Remember, these are the ones that change with production, and mathematically, they're all the marginal costs added together. So, obviously, because they're all the marginal costs added together, they have to start with marginal costs, although that's not a critical part of the theory. And what we will see is that average variable costs will fall when marginal costs are underneath them. So, average variable costs will continue to fall even after the point of diminishing marginal returns, because even though marginal costs are increasing, they're still lower than what ABC were. So we won't see ABC begin to increase until they meet average, uh, I'm sorry, until they meet marginal costs, and after that point, we'll see ABC rise like this. Finally, let's have a look at ATC. ATC will fall for two reasons. The one will be the exact same reason that we see the movement in ABC. When MC is below ATC, ATC will fall, and you could also say ATC will fall because of what's happening with ABC. So, MC is always going to start up here, well above ABC. We'll talk about why when we get to this second reason. And we will see ATC fall fairly quickly. And again, it's going to fall more quickly than ABC does, still for this second reason that we haven't talked about yet. It will continue to fall until it meets MC, and notice, because of the positive slope of MC, that's going to have to be after ABC begins to rise. So there will be a point where ABC is rising, but ATC is falling. What you'll see as you draw this, and you have to be kind of careful with it, is that ATC and ABC will get closer and closer together, but they will never quite meet. And again, that relates, relates to this next uh, point that we'll make right now. To explain the second reason for ATC falling, which is AFC that we're going to look at now, I redrew just for clarity. Do note that I kept the lowest point of ABC and ATC, that is, where marginal co uh, costs would have intersected them, I kept them there for reference. So something to notice here is that the space between ABC and ATC gets smaller and smaller, yet they never quite meet. Mathematically, they're what, what are called asymptotes, which is the name for curves like this that get smaller and smaller but never meet. Well, this reflects what we're going to see in the AFC curve. So let me make a, a demonstration real quickly. The space in between AFC and ATC, I'm, ATC and ABC, so in this case about 65 millimeters, well, that space is identical to the distance between the x-axis and the AFC curve. So at any point, what we're going to see is that, so for example here, the space between these two curves is about 30 centimeters, therefore the ATC curve, the AFC curve, would be about right there. 
So what we're going to see is that AFC is going to fall and fall and fall and fall and fall and fall and fall, but it's never going to quite get to the x-axis. And the reason for this is very simple. Remember, fixed costs are a number that doesn't change. So say something like 100 euro. Well, to get AFC, you're dividing it by the output, so you're taking the same number and dividing it by a greater and greater and greater and greater and greater amount of output. So this relationship here between AFC and the x-axis, again, is identical to the gap between ATC and AFC, ATC and ABC, all the way through here. So most of the time, you don't actually need to draw AFC because if you understand the nature of this gap, then you understand that AFC is observed without having to draw it. So to quickly conclude, it's important to note that what we see in MC is the fundamental economic theory, the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns. So we see that here, which then in turn affects the shape of ABC. AFC and AVC are what make up ATC. So ATC's shape comes from the law of eventually diminishing marginal returns, but it also comes from the fact that AFC is being spread out over a greater and greater amount of output.